soul waits for the Lord, who is our help and our shield. May your kindness, O Lord, be upon us, who have put our hope in you. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we put our trust in you. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, but one who has been similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of, throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. He replied, What do you wish me to do for you? They answered him, Grant that in your glory, we may sit one at your right and the other at your left. Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? They said to him, We can. Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink you will drink and with the baptism with which I am baptized you will be baptized. But to sit at my right or at my left is not mine to give, but is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they became indignant at James and John. Jesus summoned them and said to them, You know that those who are recognized as rulers over the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you will be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you will be the slave of all. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. For the first time, I think I am reading gospel passage uh, on a weekend mass after I came here because we have all the deacons, but this weekend they are on their retreat. Well, Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem, his final journey to Jerusalem. And he knows that he is going there to suffer and to die. He already told his disciples three times that he is going to suffer and die. It took a long time for 
them to realize and recognize who Jesus was. Finally, Peter says, you are the Messiah, right? So at least that part, they knew who he was. He, for them, he was the Messiah. But the problem was, for them, the conventional understanding of Messiah was different. Messiah is going to be a righteous ruler who will destroy the Romans and re-establish the kingdom of David in Jerusalem. So that was their understanding of a Messiah. And therefore, they could not even accept the reality, the truth, that Jesus is going to suffer and die. Such a Messiah they could not accept or understand. For them, they wanted a Messiah like a world leader. And Jesus' understanding of Messiah was the opposite. When we speak about authority in the world or power in this world, it's all about who is in power. He or she grows. And the people shrink many a time. In Jesus' understanding, one who has the authority or power, he or she shrinks and the subjects enjoy life. He is the true leader. He is going to offer his own life. He is going to bleed so that others may not bleed. That's the difference of the power and authority according to Jesus and according to the world. Now my question, I have to ask questions always, right? How many of you think you are successful in your life? How many of you think you are a failure in your life? Don't raise your hands. Bella, don't do that. Okay, you're fine. Because we, or the world, measure success in a way, or failure in a way. Say for example, it's all about competition. You compare your achievements with the achievements of others, right? And if you are above their achievements, then you are a success. If you think your achievements are not that much, then you think you are a failure. And then it's all about you have to defeat the competitor, right? The competition should be defeated so that you can be the winner. That's how the world measures success or failure. Do you know how God does it? How does God do measure success or failure? Any idea? For Jesus, success is measured in the following way. When God created you and sent you into this world, God had a dream for you. A unique dream for everyone. And if you figure that out in your life, if you are able to accomplish that his dream in this world, then for him you are successful. Make sense? And if you don't realize the dream at all or do nothing with it, then we can say we are failures. How many of you write your own job description? Do you do that? If you're self-employed, you may do that, but still then, it's not fully because you have to follow a lot of practices. But God, when he sent you into this world, he sent you with a complete a written job description for you. 
and that's what we call as predestination but that's it the end of that job description whether you do it or not totally depends upon you like jesus god the father sent his son into this world to fulfill a mission and jesus knew what it was and he tried his best to fulfill that in this world and we can say jesus was fully a success but for the world in their evaluation maybe jesus was a failure mary jesus is mother who was immaculate she was sent into this world with that mission but she had all the options to say no when the angel came to announce the good news she could even say i don't care i am not going to do it that was the end of the dream for her but she said yes she continued to understand the dream of god for her and she continued to say yes to that dream and she became successful and now i ask you again the question are you successful in your life or are you a failure in your life if you know his dream for you if you are fulfilling his dream for you in your life then you are successful and the good thing about jesus authority or power or success is that we are all invited to be successful when we fail god lifts us up again he doesn't want us to be fail in this life our failure he turns into success as well and also it's not about we have to defeat somebody to be successful in jesus's kingdom everyone is successful we do not defeat anybody but we help others to be successful that's a difference Let us proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and old maid, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the holy spirit was incarnate of the virgin mary and became man for our sake he was crucified under pontius pilate he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the father he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end i believe in the holy spirit the lord the giver of life who proceeds from the father and the son who with the father and the son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets i believe in one holy catholic and apostolic church i confess upon baptism for the forgiveness of sins i look forward to the resurrection of the dead the life of the world to come We thank Almighty God for our life and our mission in this world, and we ask Him to give us the grace so that we may continue to see Jesus in others. For church leaders, may the voice of the Holy Spirit 
be their guide as they lead the faithful. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all civic leaders, may God grant them a heart of humility in service to their people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and all who suffer, may the Holy Spirit restore them to the fullness of life and health. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all members of this faith community, may the Lord increase our love for and commitment to the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our local church, the Diocese of Jefferson City, that we may become a sign and instrument in the world of the presence of Christ through our communion in charity, faith, and the Eucharist. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, especially Francis Joseph, may they come to share in the fullness of Christ's glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of this Mass, which are for the repose of the soul of Marvin Vogler, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us offer our own personal intentions. We fly to thy protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petitions in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Will you let me be your servant? Let me be as Christ to you. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, 
we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for a ceremony out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of excerpt and praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name. You are indeed holy alone, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down a spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Sean our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. How mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and for my divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our savior jesus christ for the kingdom Lord Jesus Christ who said the apostles peace I leave you my peace I give you look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever Amen. the peace of the Lord be with you always Amen. let us offer each other a sign of peace Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. What do you want of me, Lord? Where do you want me to serve you? Where can I sing your praises? I am your song, Jesus, Jesus, you. Before 
and all through me. Your spirit burns deep within me. Fire my life with your love. Jesus, Jesus, be the warmth of my heart. Jesus, Jesus, you are the way. You are the light in my darkness. You are my strength when I'm weary. You give me sight when I'm blinded. Come see for me. Jesus, Jesus, you Mary, surrender to your spirit, let it be done to me. Satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come, give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. As when the shepherd calls his sheep, they Let us pray. Grant, O oh Lord, we pray, that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal. Through Christ, our oh Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Good evening. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Adam Ritter, and I'm here tonight to talk to you about stewardship, so I will keep this hopefully under an hour. <laughs> I have been a member of St. Pius all my life. I was baptized here, received my first Holy Communion here, I was confirmed here. I went to school right across the street. My son Anthony is in currently going to school there is in second grade. I am currently on the advisory board, a member of the Knights of Columbus. I have seen a lot of things change over the years here at our parish. But the one thing that I have seen stay the same is the consistency of how we come together as a parish to help support not only our church, but our wonderful school as well. Stewardship is defined as the grateful response of a Christian disciple 
who re- recognizes and receives God's gifts and shares these gifts in love of God and neighbor. God has given each of us gifts of time, talent, and treasure. It is up to us to find out what they are and how we can use them. Looking back on all the people who helped me understand how stewardship worked, two of them really stood out, my mom and dad. Through all the things they did for and still are doing for our parish, prison ministry, visiting the homebound, and my dad being a deacon. Through their example, I knew I needed to start giving more of my time, talent, and treasure. And through my example, I hope Anthony will learn from me. Was it an easy journey for me? No. But if I can help the church and our school out in any way, I will try to do so to the best of my ability. That is what God asks of me. That is what God asks of us all here tonight. To do what we can to to be faithful stewards, faithful disciples. Like I said before, God has given us all gifts to use. How will you use yours? Thank you. Thank you, Adam, for your sharing and inviting people to be uh, active stewards in our parish. The members of the stewardship committee will be in the back of the church after Mass to help you sign up for the Grateful Living small group process. If you haven't already done, please uh, join today. Friendship Circle this Wednesday, Mass at noon, followed by luncheon and social hour. First reconciliation prep is starting soon. Details are in the bulletin. Please uh, sign your second grader up if you uh, haven't already done. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Though the mountains may fall and the hills turn to dust, yet the love of the Lord will stand as a shelter for all who will call on his name, sing the praise and the glory of God. Could the Lord ever leave you? Could the Lord forget his love? the glory